Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 19, Staying Positive. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr. Andrew Exton. Welcome to another edition of the Mac Connections podcast. And as we do every week, we've got Joanna Parker from Heart Sparks back with us. And Joe, today we're going to talk about a topic that I think is sometimes we dance around because the term negative has negative connotation, so to speak. But it would seem to me that the first thing that we should say about negative thoughts is that they're completely natural. And even though we might be experiencing a little bit more of them at the moment with regards to the situation we're in, the first thing we almost need to do is understand that feeling a bit negative about things is a perfectly natural part of the way we think and the way we behave. Yeah, you're so right. And not just natural, but also important because it's from negative thinking and dissatisfaction that we start to understand what is and isn't okay in the world and what we want to challenge as well. It's often when we're feeling negative towards something or dissatisfied with something, we're likely to then think about changing it or creating some movement in that way. So even the term negative thoughts can sometimes be looked at more in the lines of what's helpful in regards to our thinking and what's unhelpful because sometimes, yeah, those negative thoughts can be the most helpful ones to have in regards to shifting things and moving forward. The one thing that I would say is obvious at the moment though, Joe, is the fact that we've probably got more time that we're consciously thinking about the things that are negative. If if we were back at school or in normal circumstances, being around friends, enjoying the flexibility to do things probably means that those negative thoughts aren't as conscious in our thinking as what they might otherwise be. So if we accept that, we're probably far more likely to be focusing on those negative thoughts that we've got. And let's face it, whether it be when are we going to return to normal and when can I see my friends to how the exams are going to look like or am I going to complete all my assessment? We're consciously thinking about those more. So how do we manage that in terms of trying to keep a perspective around our thoughts and and also having a general positive outlook to what's going to happen in the future? As humans, we have between 60,000 and 80,000 different thoughts a day. So we're thinking constantly. And the majority of them are thoughts that we don't even realize that we're having. So when those negative ones come along, often we're having so many more of them than we even are able to identify because they're, they're running in our subconscious all of the time. When they're there, the first thing that's helpful is just to acknowledge that they're there and to recognise them for what they are, which is thoughts that are not making us feel great. Often negative thinking, when it pops into our mind, can be associated with the what-ifs or with uncertainty, the things that we're not sure about. And you brought up such a great example there around when am I going to return to school? When am I going to see my friends? What are my assessment tasks going to look like? Because those are all areas that have uncertainty around them right now. So first of all, just recognising that you are thinking something that's potentially negative or unhelpful is a great place to start. Then the second thing that can be helpful is to identify whether or not that thought is helping you be the person who you want to be and get to the place that you want to get to in the world. Because sometimes, as we said before, it can be helpful. It can drive us or motivate us to do things differently or to do more of something. But if you're identifying that it's making you feel bad and it's not actually helping you move forward, that's a really good reason to start to reframe or to challenge it. And so when it comes to challenging negative thoughts, there are two paths here. If they're based on uncertainty, we can try and find answers to the questions and the uncertainty that we have, which at the moment is really challenging, but in other circumstances can sometimes be really helpful and possible. Or the other thing that we can do is try to curb that thinking a little, to check in and ask ourselves, well, what 
evidence is there to back up this negative thought that I'm having. So if the thought is I'm never going to see my friends again, it's going to be such a long time until I see them, what evidence is there to suggest that that thought is true? And on the other side of that, what evidence is there to suggest that that thought might not actually be true? Because the thing about thoughts is that they're just that, they're thoughts. And the only thing that tends to be stronger in our psychology than a thought is a fact. The, then the next step is really starting to hone in on what's helpful. So if that thought isn't helping us, what can I do or remind myself or check in with myself about that's going to be more helpful for me than staying in that thinking loop around the thought? And whether it's just about recognising in that friend instance that we can connect with people in another way or that this situation we're currently in will inevitably come to an end at some point or actually reaching out to somebody on Zoom or on the phone and connecting in to support ourselves to feel connected rather than how we're feeling in that moment, we can then start to almost reframe the initial thought that we were having into something that's much more true, much more helpful and based in the opposite of the way that it's making us feel. All hard work and not easy, especially when we're feeling uncertain and exhausted by negative thinking, but helpful and easy steps forward to the other side sometimes. So we're we're most of the time able to manage and maybe reframe our negative thoughts to, to put them into some perspective. But occasionally we're going to have some people, and 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 this is true in all circumstances, I suppose, we're going to have some people that aren't able to reframe or manage. Absolutely. And they're going to find that there's a burden around their negative thoughts. Now, again, if we're physically at school or in a workplace, the connection that we have with people enables us to to seek out some support or ask for some some support. But again, we're in that situation, Joe, where that's not as accessible to us. And if I use my example, you find yourself at the computer, you're doing work, and then you have a break. And there's only so many walks you can go on for a day because <laughs> you're only an, allowed an hour and you find yourself playing on the laptop, going to look for searches. I mean, if I use the golf analogy, mm-hmm. I could go online and get 20 different YouTube clips about how to fix my golf swing. How do I work out which one's the correct one and what's the best advice for me? And I, I think one of the questions I'd like to ask you, how do you, how do you find the best support information for you? How do you find good support in a situation where you are at your desk and you are isolated and maybe you are doing a Google search and there's 50 or 100 different options that come up around how to manage support? What advice would you be about trying to find the right path to the support that's going to best enable you to, I suppose, work through some of the issues you're experiencing? Great question. And before I answer that, I just want to back up a little and touch on that thing you said around how sometimes we can't reframe things for ourselves and we do need support. And that's something that will be the case, I think, for all of us at different points in our lives. I'm an international confidence coach. I work with people all over the globe around building their personal confidence. But there are still days when I feel like I'm the least confident person in the world. That's a natural part of being human. And so finding ourselves in these situations where we need more support than we've got is normal for lack of a better word and so okay there is so much information out there and that in itself can get really overwhelming because you're right not all of it's going to be any good let alone be relevant to us and so first of all the best thing we can do is just to start with something because standing back and looking at everything that's in front of us without choosing anything still doesn't help us get to where we are and so start with one article and have a read. If it's helpful, read further. If it's not, move on. Another thing that you can do is just to think about who you trust the most in the world because we don't have to go this alone. And so if there's a friend or a teacher or someone in your family or your community who you trust, reaching out to them and letting them know that you're looking for more information on something or you need help with something then means you're going to have another team or someone else who's helping you search. things that could be helpful. Finally, I think we can always 
focus on things that are outside of ourselves and almost look for people to tell us the answers or look for answers to be presented to us. But sometimes it can be more helpful to just get really quiet and to be with ourselves and to think for ourselves, what is it that I know that I need right now based on similar times when I've not feel great, felt great and what's been helpful back then. But I think the biggest key here is not giving up. If the first article or the second article or the third article isn't helpful, please don't stop looking. (laughs) Shift, continue to reach out for support and have a conversation with anyone because talking to anyone sometimes is better than speaking to no one. So, Joe, accepting that we have them, trying to reframe them in terms of our thoughts and accepting sometimes they're going to be negative and then and then reaching out for whatever method suits you the best. It might be written, it could be, it could be, um, it could be verbal through conversation, it could be through listening to information through podcasts and various forms. If we have an openness around almost trying to square that circle and accepting and then looking for support and then working through that process each time we're going to feel it, because it seems to me that it's not it's not one thought you have on this day. It could be a range of thoughts that you have on a number of different days and they could be different based on the circumstances. So if we do that, we're going to feel like we're at least not allowing them to become a burden with regards to the way we're thinking. That's right. And just remembering that they're they're one part of our thinking. Sometimes it can feel like a negative thought or an unhelpful thought that we're having is everything. It's the only thing that we're thinking, but it's one part of our thinking. It's not something that defines all of what goes on in our head or even all of who we are, because so often those thoughts that we have aren't even based in the truth. They're just stories that our mind is creating for the sake of trying to keep us safe. With that, Joe, thank you very much again for uh, coming on and uh, we'll look forward to having another chat with you next week and uh, we really appreciate your insights and we hope that everyone that's listening gets some benefit from it. So thanks again. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and look after yourself.